There are two sort of general ways to create the canopy of a deciduous tree. You can either go from the inside out or from the outside in. There's a window of opportunity with our deciduous species where the final leaves are dropping. They're coming away with very little effort. They've absorbed all of their green pigmentation. And that's our sign that this tree is ready for some autumn work. Today I'm going to cut it back. We might wire some secondary branches. We'll see how it goes. If you're a long-term sur survivor, if you're a long-term subscriber, you might remember this tree as it was one of the earlier pieces of material that I showed to the channel. After its initial styling, I just let it go, let it rip. As you can see, whoosh. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut back these branches. I'm not gonna think too much about the silhouette for now. I just really wanna make some space so I can maneuver around. So each time I prune, I'm just looking for a nice little side shoot to prune back to, making a little bit of room to maneuver and I'm preventing myself from losing any eyeballs. So in terms of timing of deciduous work, if for whatever reason I missed this window of opportunity in the autumn, by pruning and dormancy, you trigger a hormonal change in the tree where it begins to think about compartmentalizing any wounds that have been created. And to do that, it draws Oh my word. It draws resources from the cells, which decrease its winter hardiness. And the sugars and, and starches, the carbohydrates that are stored, are in fact what give the tree its antifreeze. By pulling those sugars back in to deploy them elsewhere is what decreases the tree's resistance to freezing. By pruning at this time of the year, when the tree is currently allocating its resources, the hormonal distribution is currently being processed, if you like, the tree has time to adapt without affecting the loading of the sugars and starches or antifreeze. I'm not a botanist, so I'm, I'm probably glazing over some pretty uh, significant details in that. But outside of the window, you can still do the work. You just have to be mindful and then think about sheltering in an unheated garage, in a shed, or if you've got a greenhouse in the greenhouse. What have we got then? We've got a reasonably natural image of an elm and the branching is lending itself to a kind of informal broom structure. This first branch here, visually this is counteracting the lean because the, the base wasn't strong enough to, to give visual balance. The roots down below didn't look stable enough. I will be keeping this branch, but it's shading this one out. We're probably gonna cut this one off. The question is, is that stage now? Do we want to put some wire and move this? There are two sort of general ways to create the canopy of a deciduous tree. You can either go from the inside out or from the outside in. The clip and grow method, where you grow the branch out, then you cut back to where you want bifurcation. Two branches grow, you let them grow out to a certain thickness, you cut those back, bifurcates, grow, cut, grow, cut, grow, cut. You're, you're essentially developing the um, tree from the inside out. The alternative to, to growing from the inside outwards is to go from the outside inwards. This is an approach that I think is more akin to how conifers are developed and it's in terms of my awareness of, of, the, um, of the approach, it's come about from Ryan Neal of Bonsai Marai. You're allowed to grow, thicken and cut back to your desired silhouette. And then over time, you build the branches on the interior. And when you've got something to cut back to, to get your taper or your refinement or your ramification, then you do the cut back. And what that means is that you, all, you always have a nice tree image. Your branches might be like this, pretty taperless out to the silhouette, but you've got, that, you've got that tree image in its proportion and its scale. So I wire shape into the branches to the silhouette, allow it to thicken. When it's thick enough, I cut back again to the silhouette. That stimulates internal buds and shoots to form that form the secondaries. And then at some stage, those secondaries take on a, a certain aesthetic that allow me to cut the primary back to those secondaries what, and maintain the silhouette in terms of the design that we have created. Neither approach is right, neither approach is wrong. Each has benefits and drawbacks. Wiring scars aren't ideal. Uh, we, we, don't, we certainly don't wire with the intention of allowing scars to develop. Uh, certain species have thicker bark than others, so, and um, the wire scars heal better than others. 
but we're also we're always looking at the the wires removing them if they become um if they look like they're gonna cut in if an accident happens we we can either heal the wire scar or we can at some stage cut back in our refinement process to remove the wire scar when we've got something to cut back to and when i say when we've got something to cut back to i don't mean buds i mean a branch a secondary piece an interior branch that adds to the design when we cut back not at some point in the future that's that's the approach that i'm taking i'm just going to try and give this one a little bit more interest come in a bit come on come in Starting to put a bit of stress on that joint there. Yeah, so I've been able to get this away from this branch more than I thought I would be able to actually. Uh, I thought it was going to be, uh, I thought we were going to get a lot less movement than I actually managed to so now that I know that I can move this move this piece a little bit more as well oh I don't have much leverage now that this piece of wire is getting short Just developed just a little bit of a split there. I'm going to get a little bit of callus mate in there. There we go. That's not a beautiful application, but it's going to do the job. This branch here is point, pointing almost straight down and it's on the inside of a bend. It looks kind of awkward, so let's just remove it. I've selected the wire that's going to get the job done with this branch. I have to just be careful with this one. So support the wire onto the, um, the quote unquote primary branch. Got my finger in the shoulder here, and then I'm gonna apply the wire. Support the branch, a couple of turns to get it locked, and then I'll just repeat the process here. Notice I've hit the shoulder from the trunk side, and I'll also hit the shoulder from the trunk side. The wire is counterclockwise on this branch. Just move this out of the way a little bit. This one, it'll be clockwise. This gives us the most stability in our wire so that when we come to bend moving one doesn't move the other. I'm going to support the wire at the shoulder and I come in and up finish with our bud sort of facing outwards a little bit. As the tree takes shape well I'll probably end up fiddling with that a little bit and reassessing it. Here I'm being conscious where I'm positioning these secondary twigs I don't want to inadvertently position them on the inside of a bend, so I will just tweak there so it's now on the outside. Tweak there so that this little guy is also on the outside of a bend. For the initial move, I'm not really happy with how this one is sitting. I feel like I want it to come up and out. There we go, that's looking better. We're looking at this branch now. I'm gonna chop back here, I think. And then we've got this secondary coming off it. The saw cut is quite a, a tearing cut to the cells and the cells heal better if they're cleanly cut. Retrim those edges where that green cambium is. Cutting towards the center rather than away from it because if, especially if you've got a blunt knife cutting away, you've got a chance of pushing the cambium off the underlying tissue whereas cutting towards it you keep it all nice firmly attached. Practicing everything you can to ensure the success of your work and the quality of the finish in the short run and long term. As we speak air is starting to enter that system. The longer I leave it the more chance of dieback there is. We're, we're always dealing in risks. Nothing is certain. Dieback isn't certain. Who's planting that as a hardwood cutting then? Come on own up. Me. <laughs> Why do I bother? Why? Come on, that'll make a nice little tree if it roots. 
I'm not convinced I'm going to keep both of these primary branches. If we were building from the inside out using the clip and grow method, we'd probably cut back somewhere like, I don't know, somewhere here, hope to get buds, and then they would grow and we'd cut those back somewhere here, grow, cut back, grow, cut back, grow, cut back. Whereas the approach we're taking is we're cutting it back to secondary pieces that have buds at the silhouette that we're after. Sure, it doesn't look as refined as it could do, but it also doesn't look like a Tyrannosaurus Rex with stumpy arms. Kind of fills in the canopy. When it leaves out, it'll look like a nice tree. I don't know, like, what do you think? I don't think there's a best approach. I just think it depends on what your goals are and how you prefer to do it. For going from the outside in, I've got a funny feeling it will end up with a, a showable bonsai image faster than the clip and grow. That's my, that's just my opinion. I still think there's a, I still think there's a merit to cutting back to this piece. So is this still the front? Is there a case for accepting that we might not have the Nabari to anchor this lean? Do we, do we come sort of, do we straighten up a bit? Let's continue with the design. Let me know what you think in the comments. I mean, is that our front? So the next one to look at is gonna be this branch over here. There's an interesting feature on this tree, actually. Somewhere around here is like, I'll show you with a close up, there's an anus. <laughs> there's actually a, ho there's a hollow in here. And the reason it's swollen is because it's hollow. The, the actual opening to the hollow has closed because it's been growing so strongly. It calloused, it rolled, and it closed. Like, what am I going to do? Open the hollow up, make a make a feature out of it, and 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 deal with the inverse taper. Well, as it turns out, I don't have any carving tools. After, believe it or not, a honeysuckle, one of the softest wood species that I've got in the garden, managed to kill my Dremel. Uh, so I'm going to have to deal with this for the time being. Right, I know what we're going to do. That branch was sort of visually contributing or exacerbating the uh, the sort of the inverse taper situation that we've got. That one had to go. I, I do quite like this branch. I think it's got a place in the design. It's coming forward, giving, up a, giving us a bit of depth, nice bit of movement. This, I could wire this upwards, but it's, uh, it's getting very visually busy in here. And we've got another piece that I can use. Got a group of three here and a bit of a knuckle forming. If I keep anything here, no matter what I keep, is always going to have a knuckle so at some stage i will end up cutting back and refining just just to make life easier i'm just going to make a decision and cut this lower piece off because it's from the front it's visually contributing to the appearance of that knuckle The apex up here is too tall. So where is my apex then? I feel like we're starting to get somewhere. decision about the apex now where's our apex going to be um, you know I think this is too tall preferably we want the apex coming forward somewhat we don't want it leaning backwards we've got a candidate here do we cut back here use this branch maybe this branch it's an option this guy's an option it might be that eventually this becomes the apex I'm not sure if there's a future trunk leader in this branch.
Alrighty folks, well, no matter if you're a clipper and a grower, a wire and a pruner, or whatever this is, whether you grow from the inside out, the outside in, the upside down, it doesn't matter, we're all growing tiny little trees in pots. We're all just one big daft family having fun. Oof, I'm really tired after all that. 